Hello, friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where we appreciate the form in Transformers. Today, we are taking a look at an oversized knockoff of Transformers The Last Night Nitro or Nitro Zeus. Uh, this is the one from, I believe, Black Mamba, and it's called Ares Nitrogen. Yeah. Yeah. So, even more Jaeger-tastic name aside, here we have Ares Nitrogen, and this is... I, I, I love this. I absolutely love this figure. I'm just going to say that now. I thought Nitro, or Nitro Zeus, whatever you want to call the figure, because the figure was called Nitro, but the character in the movie was Nitro Zeus. I, I don't know why they did that. But anyway, that was a good figure. Had a few issues. Uh, one of the most notable things that kind of bugged me with that one was just the general lack of paint detailing. And of course, this one does up its game significantly with the paint detailing, which we'll see mostly in robot mode, but here you can kind of get a glimpse of that, and that's already pretty impressive. But uh, it's not just the paint detailing. Something about the size and the weight of this toy with like the bits of die cast and the chest and the feet and all that, like the way it all just kind of comes together with the size and the weight, it feels right. Like this feels like the original figure was always meant to be this, if that makes any kind of sense. Now that said, aside from the paint detailing differences in robot mode, there's very little that's really different between this and the original. Unfortunately, I do not have the original figure anymore to do a comparison with, but in terms of the jet mode, there's not a whole lot different here, aside from a lack of Decepticon logos on the wings, really, and the fact that this thing is like three times the size. As with the original, it's a very good looking, very clean looking jet mode if you ignore the all the junk going on underneath there. But it tucks away really nice just in terms of the overall silhouette of the jet if you're looking at it from the top. And what I really like about this is the colors that they went with for this. It's like a very slightly blue tinge to this gray that I'm not entirely sure is going to come off quite right on camera. But just the shade that they went with for the primary color of this figure it really brings out the lined molded detail in the uh, jet mode here, which, I mean, this was there in the original figure, but here it's just much easier to see, and I like that very much. <laughs> it just kind of adds that little bit of extraness to the jet mode. And there are some other bits, like this section here is now silver, and some kind of gunmetally silver for the uh, landing gear, and what are sort of technically landing gear. And again, this is we're mostly going to ignore all of this until we get to robot mode, but yeah, it's just it's a pretty nice looking jet mode. It's a bit on the plane side, no pun intended, when you're looking at it from the top here because I mean, there's really like you've got some nice line details here, but it's really just black and gray for the most part, which is fine. And I do like the way that the colors broken up and this is something that I liked in the original too, how you had like the black nose cone and then like the predominantly, and that figure is mostly just like a grayish white, but it's a nice, interesting bit of color separation that is not something I normally think of when I think of any kind of military jet. Like the colors on those seem to be mostly uniform, if not just one solid color. Also here they separated things out a little bit more by having this gray kind of continue from the wing section and a little bit up into the I guess this is sort of like the cockpit area-ish, whereas I believe in the original figure, this was all kind of like all black. So this just kind of brings that air intake detail out a little bit better. And you still have the cockpit, which you can open the, yeah, open this thing for, and uh, not a whole lot going on in there. <laughs> like there is some molding. You kind of see like a molded seat and what could maybe be controls. Problem with this is because this figure is so big, a regular Titan Master is not going to fit in there. And by not going to fit, I mean it's going to be like just, just way too much space. Like here, you know, regular Titan Master. And that. <laughs> you can't even. <laughs> the head doesn't even come up high enough to see. So, yes, it's a, it's a very, very large jet, which I'm okay with. I mean, it's not. I don't want to say it's absurdly large, but it's significantly larger than the original. And this is going to be kind of tricky to do, but I'm going to try it. Yeah, this is this was a bad idea. <laughs> uh, 
here we have Ares Nitrogen ugh, <laughs> with Rensora. And I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lean them up so we can kind of look at them this way. So there you can kind of see it's a little bit smaller than Rensora in jet mode, but still a pretty decently sized vehicle. All right, now that the Rensora comparison is out of the way for now, at least the vehicle mode one, let's do a bit more uh, a bit more normal size comparison here. There's a good place to put this thing. It could just stay there, I guess. And here it is with the Amiibo and a Titan's Return Deluxe, and this is just this is a this is a big vehicle mode, like I said before. <laughs> Get you out of the way here real quick. And yeah, if we reposition this a little bit better and put the Titans Return <laughs> Deluxe on top there, you can see it is definitely a large jet. All right, so one last thing before we get into the transformation and I fumble around with trying to do this while keeping everything on camera because it is quite large. I would like to point out that this uh, Ares Nitrogen does have the triple missiles that Nitro does, that Nitro had, only these are the same general gray plastic color as the main parts of the jet mode and just has the little tips painted red. And this looks so much better in my mind. The stark white of the original accessory bits that came with the Nitro or Nitro Zeus were just really kind of out of place with everything else and stuck out way too much. These actually fit the overall aesthetic. Like even the red for the tips here ends up pretty closely matching the red that we're gonna see in robot mode. So even there, it's a much more cohesive color scheme. So yeah, this toy is so good, it actually got me to appreciate those stupid little triple missile accessories. Anyway, that is enough of the jet mode. So let's take a look at the robot mode. That was a lot harder to do at arm's length than I thought it was going to be. The die cast in this guy makes him quite a bit heavier to manipulate at a distance like that than I anticipated. So yeah, my arms are tired. <laughs> Forgive the lack of gesturing at the moment. That said, holy crap, this robot mode. <laughs> I mean, I thought Nitro looked great, and Nitro did look great. I still think Nitro is a very cool figure, but Ares is just amazing. Like, it's fundamentally the same figure with only a few very small mechanical differences, which I will point out in a couple of minutes. But just, again, the size and the weight of this figure make it feel like this is what it should have been the whole time. And of course, you also have the paint scheme, which is just fantastic. I mean, instead of the sort of black and gray and very little else, here you've got that sort of bluish gray and then a lot of this gunmetal y silver color for the exposed robot bits, which that was one thing that really bothered me with Nitro is the fact that only the Gatling gun barrel was silver. The rest of the figure, there was like no other silver on it, and it just seemed really weird and out of place. But here, that kind of metallic color is all throughout the figure, and it looks fantastic. And you've got all kinds of little areas that are picked out and like, like a goldish bronze and some red and some metallic blue, and this just looks fantastic. So getting in a little closer, both so we can see the details and so I can actually reach the figure comfortably because I have to have the camera way far back to show the entire thing in the shot. 
this just like this looks amazing this is just you can't argue and if you do you're wrong because this looks amazing this is like legendary toys wasp compared to movie masterpiece bumblebee kind of like black and white day and night kind of comparison it is incredible what they did with this mold and again it's it's the same figure just bigger with die cast and a lot more paint and some very very minor engineering tweaks but i just love this the head which I'll just pop you off because it's easier to show it off that way the head is totally the uh nitro head just done in that bluish gray plastic with a lot of really nice gunmetal silver in the face and head crest there and i like that they actually picked out his one main and four sort of minor eyes there. I kind of wish there was a little bit of color on the ear wings here, but still, overall, this head looks great. And just, you know, with the rest of the figure, put it all together. Why don't you go, there we go. You put it all together and that just looks utterly fantastic. That said, it does come with a secondary head, which is just totally Dark of the Moon Shockwave. I don't know why they did this, I guess just because this body kind of looks like it could be shockwave. I am not that big on this. Like, I think this looks fine, but I don't really like the way this head looks on this body. Fortunately, it's an easy swap. Just pop the head off, pop the new head in. Like, that looks fine, really. Like, the smoothness of this head kind of matches the smoothness going on the chest plate here and the bits, the bits of the leg. So it's, there's not like any major design dissonance going on here. It This does sort of aesthetically fit with the figure, but I'm just not that big onto this head as it compares to this one. I think this one just fits the aesthetic of this figure a lot better. That and I've never really been a huge fan of the uh, kind of forward pointing ears that Dark of the Moon Shockwave has. It's kind of, it's like a fox straining to hear something or some kind of sad bunny. I mean, the detailing is nice. Don't get me wrong. I do think it's nice, and I think they did a good job sort of incorporating a color scheme to make this match with this. But again, I just don't think that this looks as good with the body as this. So it is just going to stay there. And other accessory this comes with is the blue wiggly hose. There's nothing at all anywhere in the instructions that shows you how to attach this. There's nothing even in the box, like on the artwork on the box, that actually gives you a clue as to how this is supposed to connect. The only thing that it shows is it plugs into the back of the elbow here, presumably in this gap here, and then attaches somewhere on the back. Again, presumably. The issue that I've run into is if you jam this in here and try to just stick this into a screw hole, it doesn't stay like at all. I mean, it, it might if you were to, say, angle it out a bit more so there's less kind of tension on the hose there. But then that severely limits posing because you basically have to have the arm out. And I just don't think that's worth it. The other thing that I tried when I first got the figure that seemed to work okay is to actually jam this end into here and line it up so that this bit's pointed up because that way this kind of gives you a little bit more room to work but like this doesn't really go in very well so i'm pretty sure that's not the intention but if you stick that in there then this has an easier job of staying inside the screw holes kind of but again the problem becomes things like tension and stuff and it's just it's annoying like this kind of can just jam in there and that kind of works but again it's not worth it i don't think and there's no place for this hose to go in jet mode so we'll just get rid of this come here come here there we go and those are going to go in the closet and we're never going to see those again before i get into the nitty-gritty details i do want to show off some of the engineering tweaks that were made to this guy. Some of them are very subtle, and some of them not so subtle, but I appreciate virtually all of the changes they made. One thing that I didn't even realize at first is the way these shoulder pauldrons work, they actually stop at a certain point now, whereas 
in the original toy, these could fold in a bit more. And so with this natural stopping point, you can just kind of, it's easier to get them in a place where you f where they feel good rather than having them kind of flopping around and making, uh, displaying him in static poses is a little tricky because inevitably these don't quite line up properly and so you'll have to end up with something like that. But no, with this natural stopping point, it works a lot better because you can, you know, you transform him, whatever, and then you just, whoop, there you go. Don't even have to worry about it. Next thing is this hand here actually has a joint on it, which is completely pointless in the grand scheme of things, but I do think it looks pretty good if you tilt it just slightly, because by tilting it just a little bit, you get a little bit of separation from this shield arrow thing, and it more masks the angle of the fist on this hand. I appreciate that they added that joint. I don't think it's entirely necessary, but you know, it's fine. It's, it's an option. It can, it can look cool if you use it subtly. <laughs> don't go overboard. And then for this hand, they have this panel which was added that covers up the gap in the forearm. And it's not necessary, you don't even really have to use it, but it's, you know, it's there and fills it in, so that's cool. I appreciate that. And they also added ankle tilts. This is the one thing with this figure's posability, with the original figure's posability that was driving me nuts, is the fact that you didn't have ankle tilts. But no, you can see a little bit of a tilt there, just attached to that joint there. And it doesn't affect transformation at all because it has to be lined up properly in order to fit into that spot. So you don't even have to worry about the tilt screwing anything up. And then a couple more small engineering bits. Uh, one being the fact that these are actually, these hinges here that these go up and down on are actually nice and tight. So you can angle the turbines how you like. So if you want them kind of facing forward more, you can do that. If you want them down, you can do that. But regardless, however you have them set up, you don't have to worry about them flopping around like mine was doing all the time. So hooray for that. Another small change that I do still appreciate is this back section here, the tail bit. It hinges differently now. It used to come down a lot further and the tail would actually kind of hang down around here on the original figure. Now, because of the way it folds up, it forms a much tighter backpack. It's much more contained to just the upper body now instead of hanging all the way down and it cleans up his silhouette a lot in robot mode because now you do still have the jet bits hanging out back there, but they're back there. And you they're mostly just kind of, you can ignore them because the torso's right there instead of having a plain tail hanging down right around here. So it's much less obvious. And one last engineering thing that I was very, very happy with. They shortened the tabs that these lock into like now there's a little bit of a little bit of a bump there but it's nowhere near as pronounced as it was in the original toy so you can actually transform these turbines like fold them up and t transform them back into wings and whatever without these popping off it is wonderful <laughs> it's so wonderful to be able to transform this thing without having to worry about that one thing happening every single time like for that alone, I'm totally sold on this. And here you can also see the triple missiles hanging off the back there. They still seem a little bit unnecessary in terms of detail, but I think they're fine. Like this, as I said, does not bother me as much as the all white, super bright colored missiles because this at least fits the color scheme. It doesn't look like completely ridiculous and out of place. It still adds an unneeded element to the top of a silhouette, which I'm not super into, but it bothers me so much less than the stark white missile bits. And of course, in terms of paint detailing, you've got the tips of the Gatling guns have been pointed, uh, have pointed, have been painted. And like, that's great because now you can actually see that he has Gatling guns on his shoulders. Whereas in the original figure, it was just black plastic. So I didn't even realize he had Gatling guns on his shoulders until I had transformed him a few times because you don't really notice. It's just shoulder detailing. You even have like little bits in there painted like around the collar. And it, this is like all the same detail overall that was with the regular Nitro figure. But just having it painted makes such a difference. And it really brings out a lot of nice detail. And the color choices too. Like again, this bluish gray plastic color that they went with really helps that line work to show up a bit. And the fact that they painted a lot of the lines really help it to show up a lot too. 
And I mean, even the metallic blue for the wiring is just a really nice touch. And I really just, I love, love all the added paint detail they put into this guy because he looks so cool. This is, as far as I'm concerned, this is the version of the figure to get, despite the fact that he's quite large. And speaking of him being quite large, here he is with Rensora, who you can see is definitely taller, but I think this actually works pretty well in terms of the two figures kind of just working with each other, because they both turn into flying vehicles, he's a subordinate, so subordinates are usually shorter than the guy in charge and these kinds of things, and yeah. I think I think this works really well. Although, all of the <laughs> all of the nice paint and everything on Ares there, this makes it look like Rensora doesn't have that much paint going on, which I know isn't true. But it just it kind of kind of makes that stand out more, just because this is that good, not because this is bad. And then in terms of regular scaling, well, not really scaling, but just regular size comparisons, I should say. Here we have Ares with our Titans Turn Deluxe and Amiibo, and yeah, he's he's a biggin'. He is definitely a biggin', and I'm cool with that, because as I've said twice now, this size and the, just the size and weight of this figure feels kind of perfect. And just for funsies, why the heck not? Because Headmaster, you know, or Titan Master. Let's uh, pop this off and. I mean, we all know this isn't going to work, but I'm just curious to see how it looks because I haven't tried this yet. So regular, uh, regular Titan Master. And there's, yeah, that's that's not in there at all with any solidness at all. But <laughs> that is adorable. I know before I said when, when uh, switching the heads in with nitro it kind of made it look like because of the slight proportional differences between the head and the rest of the body that it was a transformer wearing like a suit of some kind of suit of body armor or an exosuit or something like that this definitely takes it to that level because wow <laughs> that's just that's kind of fantastic i i sort of love it at this point i think i've made it abundantly clear where i stand on this figure like this is the version to get. If you don't have Nitro, get this. If you have Nitro, get this to replace it with, because this is just great. And if you don't have the shelf space, all I can say is if you want this figure and you don't have the shelf space, make the shelf space for it, because it is really, really good, really well made, really nicely painted, really well detailed, and just really, really cool. I absolutely love this thing. But that's enough about what I think. What do you think? Are the minor sort of mechanical adjustments enough to get you to get this guy if you had any issues with Nitro in the first place? Does the size actually put you off? Because, I mean, I could understand that, but I still think you should get it. And if you have Ares Nitrogen, what do you think of just the little mechanical changes that they made here and there? And have you noticed any other mechanical changes that I have not? Because, I mean, I think I got it all. I think. But there's always the chance that there's one or two slight changes that I didn't quite notice. But anyway, feel free to let me know what you think. You can leave a comment down below, and while you're at it, feel free to like or subscribe. Any combination of those three things would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art is more than meets the eye.